Is it a painting or is it a cabinet? What's up? Welcome to Jinked Inc. I'm Courtney. And I'm Doug. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to build a supply cabinet. And make it look like a work of art on your wall. We run into a lot of obstacles, but we figured out how to overcome them. We'll show you the, the mistakes that we made so you don't have to go through that. Got our wood screws, we got our two planks of wood right there, and we have the this is gonna be the front, and then we had these scrap pieces of wood from the shelves. They're gonna be little little step-ups that we're gonna make for the back of the shelf so that the paint sitting in the back can sit up a little bit so you can see the color. So you'll see as we make that. So we're gonna walk you through some steps on how we actually did the build, but if you wanna to skip to all the artsy stuff, then we'll go ahead and leave time codes down in the description. All right, so we have both pieces of wood here clamped together, and we have it attached here. So this little thing with the miter saw, we're gonna make a cut, and we're gonna cut into both, so we only make one cut instead of two for each piece. Cutting off the ends to get these uh, nice and straight. Okay. Here you have your protective goggles on and even a dust mask would be handy. All right, so we'll need 27 and three quarters. We said that that's how tall our shelf's gonna be. And then what's gonna be his fallout piece is where the X is so that he knows what side of the blade to put the line on. So we have our two side pieces cut at 27 and three quarters. Now we're gonna be cutting our top and bottom pieces and we're gonna be making those a 25 and a half so that it extends a little bit because we have to equate for the 3 fourths inch thick of each piece. So this is why we had to make it a little longer because you see we had to equate for this right here. So, and then our inside shelves are each gonna be about 24 inches wide for the shelving. Okay, so now when we go to make the shelves, we only had enough left over to make two 24 inch shelves. So usually what you wanna do is you wanna always buy an extra piece of wood or a little bit extra length just in case your numbers are off. But the reason we didn't buy any extra wood is because we already had this right here, which is the same exact width and length of the pieces that we're working with. So now that we have all our pieces cut, we're gonna make a dry fit. All right, so to make sure this is all square, we have our little, this little square thing and we're putting clamp. Now to put it all together. I forgot to mention that we ended up needing to cut all the 24 inch shelves about a half an inch. So uh, because of the frame, we had to create a 1 8 depth for the slide function. So just wanted to let you know from the future that I forgot to put that in. Are you ready for a montage? what it's gonna look like. 
And then we're gonna put this piece of wood right there to make it flush. I ended up needing to put hinges because the sliding mechanism did not work. Problems, problem one. Our wall is not straight. The wall bows for some weird reason and you can't really see it until you try to <laughs> mount a shelf to the wall and then realize that it doesn't sit flush. Problem number two, we used softwood because it was the cheaper option at Home Depot and softwood can bow if there's moisture in it. So when this was sitting outside drying with the paint, the top wood bowed a little bit. And I think those are the problems why the thing, um, the front part that we had put in here was not sliding. It was just the whole shelf kind of shifted with the wall and the bowing and I can't get it to line up. So we had to go with the hinges instead. I tried to be as, <laughs> as discreet as I could with it. I'm gonna try to see if I can make this look the best as I can, but I'm just gonna have to roll with it. That's what you gotta do sometimes. The first thing I do before I start a painting is I sketch it out first on Procreate. So for this painting, I did an existing design that I did for some merch and tweaked it a bit. So if you like how the first painting turned out, check out our website at jinking.com and get yourself a shirt or a sticker or something. But for my painting, I wanted to include one of my favorite animals, the octopus, and some other cool creatures as well. Now, I decided to leave the frog and the snake and the owl because, uh, well, <laughs> they're awesome. Print it out using the transfer paper for, well, the transfer. And now I tried toning my canvas this time. I've seen other artists do this and thought I'd give it a try. So I mixed up a little orange and a lot of water to create a very watered down base layer. Filled in my background first and then get started on the octopus. Now I plan on dropping a short on Friday about how I shade my tentacle sucker. So be sure to check that out. Okay, so how I'm gonna do the egg here is I'm gonna mix a little bit of the titanium white and yellow oxide to get this creamy color. I don't want the egg to be like a pure white. And I'll use the white for like some highlights and the pure oxide for some shadow. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to give the egg a little bit of variation and use the darker blue for the cracks of the egg. Is it a painting or is it a cabinet? You tell me. So there you have it, a finished painting and a functional supply cabinet. Through all our trials and errors, I think we're qualified to share with you the do's and don'ts so that you can have a more successful project right out the gate. First off, not many people will have like uneven walls. At, at least I don't think so. But um, that would be the first thing I would say is try to make sure wherever you're hanging it, the wall's pretty straight. So avoid some issues there. Next, I would suggest making the cabinet a little less wide so that the front of the, the cabinet uh, is flush right away. Um, the size that I used, it was really hard to find pieces of wood that were affordable that covered the whole surface. So just make your cabinet a little bit less wide. Look and see uh, the biggest size of the piece of wood that you can get. I think the width was like 24. That's the widest it goes. So just keep that in mind. All right, so the best type of wood to use in building a project would be hardwood. We use softwood. And uh, since we did that, it kind of turned and twist on us with different cuts. So. Yeah, so if it's in your budget to do so, definitely go with the hardwood. Yeah. All right, that's it for us today. All right, so like, subscribe, comment, and all the jazz. And until next time, be kind, stay positive, and keep, keep creating. creating.